When I first met with the students to do this video shoot, one of them told me that when they were first starting and going through college tours, their tour guide showed them the clean room facility and said, there's a lot of expensive equipment here. You'll probably never get to go in there. And after I heard that story, I realized one of the reasons I want to do this video is to show students, undergraduates, um, grad students, even high school students, that these type of facilities are in fact accessible and that they can hope to get in here and do really interesting work. This video will demonstrate some standard microfabrication techniques, including photolithography, thin film deposition, and metal liftoff. Hi, I'm Bob Guile. I'm the technical director of the Chapel Hill Analytical and Nanofabrication Laboratory, or CHANNEL. Today I'll be working with three upper-level undergraduate students who are taking an advanced-level physics lab course. The goal of the work that we do in the clean room today is to fabricate metal electrodes that will be used as the source and drain of their thin film transistor. I'll tell you all a little bit about what we're going to do. Spin Federer will help dispense the Federer resist to an even layer and give me a, a certain defined thickness. And I want this to be nice and well centered so I can get an even uniform coat. Apply vacuum. It's going to make a wonderful mess that we get to clean up later. Let's check it out. It's good. All right, so now we're going to do the mask liner over here. For kind of a quick and dirty process, you can do transparencies and the transparent regions where the photoresist will see the UV light and interact with it. Definitely worth your while if you're doing some prototyping. This is the mask holder. Blank piece of glass is to provide a rigid support for the transparency. And so that's going to go around kind of the ring area and it should be, form a nice seal. So, see what happens. Yeah. And then flip it over. Yep. There you go. And then this is going to go centered on that as best you can. Uh, actually, that is a good question. Um, there is obviously one side where they applied the ink. And you ideally want that in direct contact with your substrate. Um, and you can tell the side where it has the ink is a more matte finish. Are you convinced? Yeah. yeah. All right, and then gently slide it in. So this has 150 millijoules. Um, my lamp is about 20 milliwatts. I calibrated it, so about 7.5 seconds. Um, so let's just do that. I think that'll work. All right. Now it's going to do its thing. Um, and to get the best resolution possible, there are no gaps in between the mask and the substrate. And so um, the system will bring the mask and substrate in contact with each other. And if there's any sort of wedge, it adjusts for that so that it's nice and parallel. It's really fast. Um, and now we're done. You can pull the slide out and do that with your other sample. Snag it, and we'll do the developments. All right, so now kind of the, the fun part, we actually see your patterns. You're just gonna take your sample and pop it in there, and you'll start to see the action. Once you can kind of discern your patterns, um, you should be about done. It should be fully developed in about a minute. Um, you know, a few extra minutes is not a big deal. We're working with features are, that are on the order of hundreds of microns, so you have a pretty wide window. If we're doing like sub-micron features, 
we'd want to be really precise with development time. Looks good. The gate width, I believe, is 450. So within a micron of what we wanted. I feel like the development is good on that. The blue areas is where we'll deposit the aluminum and ultimately define the source and drain of the thin film transistor. Looking good. Let's do our deposition. This is the sample holder for the e-beam evaporation system. It takes a little finger dexterity. I obviously don't want to cover up the important features. And let's make sure it's not going to fall off. Looks good to me. Alright, so let me open this for you. So it's really particular about its placement. When it goes in there, it has to be in like just the right spot. Um, that looks good. Finally, uh, we can deposit stuff. So run recipe button. Depositing aluminum. You can't see the filament itself, but you can see the crucible. And when it gets hot enough, it'll start glowing red. All right, grab it. And then once you have those, we'll head into the other space again. The problem with sonication though, is that you can also damage your features. So press the go button and we'll see what happens. I do wanna mention that this isn't meant to be an in-depth how-to video. It's more about sparking interest and curiosity and showing what it's like to get your hands dirty and work in a clean room facility. Especially for undergraduates who are thinking about graduate school and they wanna see what it's like to be in a lab. Um, even some high school students have used our lab facility. There's a fund called um, the RTNN Kickstarter Fund, and they've gotten $1,000 to work on their uh, high school research project. If you want to learn more about the techniques that we covered today, I highly recommend you check out Coursera course called Nanotechnology and Makers Course. There's a lot of information that you can get from that. Well, we have one good one at least. It's almost two hours, not too bad. So after that, what do you plan to do next? So first we're going to make um, a couple more zinc oxide transistor films of a thinner thickness than the two that we did today. Yeah, and then we're gonna um, measure the characteristics of the thin film, looking at like the threshold voltage and turn on voltage. Voltage stability, like how constant that value is for different transistors, because we read that zinc oxide is supposed to be pretty reliable. Stable. We had more time. Than yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>